Welcome back fellow developers. In this video you're going to learn all about RawJS and how you might be able to use it in your projects. So RawJS is a JavaScript library and it basically provides you with loads of functions to create HTML elements which you can then append into your document. So for example I can call the raw.div function which will actually make a new uh, div element which I can then insert into the page uh, but it doesn't actually provide any mechanisms to do that so we need to do that manually ourselves so we might say document body uh, dot append and we can append the uh, result of the raw.div function which should essentially make us a new empty div which we if we go over to the page where the code is running you will see that there is actually an empty div present there for us. And that's in a nutshell what RawJS will do for us. It will make it easy uh, to create elements uh, to add onto our page. Uh, so we can pass in any number of uh, arguments into one of these functions, including extra uh, elements that we want to create. So let's say we wanted to put a span inside of this div. So we might say raw.span. And if we look at the output that we've got in the document, you can see that there is now a span inside of that div. And another thing that you might want to do is actually add some content inside of it, some text. So we can do that with raw.text. So we could just say something like, hello world. And you can see that text is appearing on the page uh, because it's been inserted inside of that spam. So you'll notice from the IntelliSense here for raw that it's pretty much any type of HTML element that you might want to create. So it's simply a case of choosing the right name, calling that function, and then passing in any content inside that uh, that you want to. So that's how you create elements, but so we want might want a bit more control over that. For example, we might want to actually uh, apply classes or styles directly to these elements. And a class is pretty simple. We just supply a string, and that is actually set as the class for that particular element for where it resides inside. So if we wanted to give the div a class of some class, you can see we just pass in the string of some class and that appears inside of the div. And in addition to adding classes, we can actually add in styles in line as well by providing an object with the style property names. So for example, we might want to add some padding and maybe set the uh, background of uh, this div to be red. And that object is passed in and you can see these styles are applied. And as mentioned, they're inline styles. So you've got the option of either providing a class or putting inline styles for each of the elements that you're creating with raw.js. And this object that you pass in doesn't have to necessarily be an inline style. It can be any attribute that is available for the uh, element that you're creating. So to give you an example, let's say we wanted to create an anchor tag. So we would say raw.a and call that function. And we can pass in the uh, an object with an href property, which will be set as the attribute, uh, the href property for this uh, anchor tag. And then maybe we want to put some text inside that as well. It's just saying, I click here. And you can see we've got this anchor tag and the href attribute has been set as specified in the code. So you can see all these functions are just basically providing you shortcuts uh, to creating these elements uh, with some customization with the type of arguments that you pass into the function. Another thing that you might want to do, which is a handy shortcut, is set up an event listener for the uh, element that you're creating. So here we're at the uh, div level and I want to create a click event here. So we use the raw.on function and just say... I want to run this function which has got a call to alert hello world and back in the page if we click somewhere on the div you can see the function is called and we get the alert popping up. So one thing you might do if you were using React for example is to programmatically create a list of items and that's something that we can do here with raw.js so let's say I wanted to create an unordered list and put some items inside there I'm just going to on the fly generate a new array here uh, just fill it with some null items and then I'm not really too worried about the values there because I'm just going to map these to get the index position of each of those items. And then from the map function, I'm just going to return a list item. And then we're just going to add in raw.text uh, with a template literal. <clears throat> and the template's going to say item. And then we'll interpolate the index plus one. 
uh, just so we're not starting at zero there, uh, which should give us a list of items going from one to 10, which you can see uh, the uh, unordered list is there. And obviously we've got all of the items from one to 10. So just an example of how you can programmatically create a group of elements uh, using RawJS. And uh, this would be very similar to what you would do if you were getting data from an API uh, and generating a list of components in React. So just one other thing that I wanted to show you here before we look at a practical example, and and that is to create a raw dot input and I'm going to specify the input type as text obviously we could change that if we wanted to and one of the options that we've got when we're using one of these functions is to actually pass in a function as one of the arguments and the function will receive the element that's being created and then once you've got a reference to that element you can do different things including interestingly a, a use a specific event listener that's been created by raw.js to recognize when the element has been inserted into the DOM for example we could say raw.on and listen for the special connected event and run a function when that occurs. So this is kind of like a bit of an initialization for the element. And one thing you might do when you're creating an input on the page is you might want to focus the user directly to that input uh, when the page loads. So we can say element.focus and uh, let's just log out something to the console as well. The input is now focused just to check that that has been run. Uh, and if we go over to our page, uh, to refresh it, you can see that when the page reloads, uh, the user is directed their focus directly to that input box so they can start typing. And of course, we've got this uh, message in the console as well. So pretty useful stuff if you want to initialize any of the elements that you're creating using RawJS. And, uh, and as you can see, what we've created so far is pretty simple, uh, but it's just using a few basic functions that the library provides uh, to create some markup on the page. So you might be thinking, can I use RawJS in more complicated projects and create components from it? Well, let's answer that first question first. Can you create a component with RawJS? Well, yes is the short answer uh, because you can just create a function that takes in some different bits of information. So let's say we were creating an anchor component and it's going to take in an href and a uh, some text to display. What we can do is just, we can do any uh, processing that we wanted to do with the href or the text, uh, maybe to make it up a case or something like that. But then all we need to do is just return some markup using raw.js. So we can say raw.anchor uh, and then we can specify the href attribute in the object here and then just create uh, raw.text and then pass in uh, the text that, that we've been provided. So that's just a simple example of how you might create a component using raw.js. Uh, but of course, the real world is a lot more complicated than that. You have things going in, things coming out, and you need to render these components within your application. So rather than continuing with this sample code, uh, I'm going to switch to a previous project that we did on the YouTube channel, which is actually a React project. And uh, I'm going to actually show you how it could be updated uh, to use uh, raw.js instead of react so let me just uncomment uh, these two lines and you can see this is the project that we did a while back it's really simple you basically have a few components uh, and you paste in a youtube channel id uh, click the button and it goes off and makes a request to the api and fetches all of the recent videos from that channel let's close this down for the moment so let me just quickly show you what the code looks like. Uh, there's basically an app.js file uh, for uh, our React project, and it's pretty standard. Uh, there's just some state as a function to fetch the data. Uh, and then basically we have a component for searching, and then we uh, loop through all of the data that comes back from that search and uh, create these video components, which are essentially these thumbnails on the page. So uh, there are two separate components. The search component is basically uh, a few divs with an input and a button to actually get the input that the user is typing in and pass it back up to the main app. And then the video component is really simple. It just takes one of these video objects that gets retrieved and just renders it out to the page with some uh, divs 
uh, and links and images to display all of the content. So that's ex that's how it works. Uh, I thought it'd be a really interesting idea to see if raw JS could be used to actually recreate this uh, project, but just using raw JS as the only dependency. So I did actually manage to do this, and let's have a look at how the code looks. Uh, I just need to uh, comment out the React app again, and just load in raw the raw app that we've got here. And as you can see, we've got a similar sort of component. Uh, and if I paste in the channel ID again, you can see it works fine uh, and renders all of those cards, albeit slightly differently styled. So let's have a look at how this raw app code actually works. So I've just called everything raw to denote that this is only using the raw JS library. And essentially I've created a few classes to represent each of the components, one for the app, one for the search, and then one for the video as well. So let's have a look at the app to start off with. Uh, so we've got some information in there. So we've got this function which actually goes and fetches the data uh, and actually maps the uh, data into these raw video components. And we've also uh, used the search component and appended it to the head property of this uh, raw app uh, class that we've created. There's also this hat function as well, which I'll explain a little bit more in a moment, but essentially this is enabling us to have the communication uh, between the components. But let's have a look at what the individual components look like. Uh, so here we've got the search component, which is very similar to what we had with React, but obviously we're just using the raw JS functions to actually create the different elements. And we've also got the uh, video component as well which is really simple and it's just taking a video object in uh, into the constructor and then just rendering out all of those divs and uh, links and images that are needed uh, to display the card. So creating the components was pretty easy for me really it was uh, pretty much like for like taking the react html or jsx code and uh, then putting it into the raw uh, functions and uh, the only thing that kind of came a bit of a problem really was uh, actually communicating from the search component back up to the parent component and that's where this hat function comes in so this is actually another library that the uh, vendor is also provides for us and uh, essentially uh, it enables you to say hat where this and it kind of registers the app component as a, a kind of parent component and then if you look in the search component down here uh, we use hat again to basically call the search function on the parent component with the text that's local uh, to this child component so that is a little bit complicated uh, but it does work and as you can see uh, it's not too complicated. We just use the two functions to provide the communication uh, between the two, uh, the parent and the child components. So whilst this works really well, would I recommend using RawJS instead of React on your next project? Well, I guess it does work for very simple and minimal uh, projects, as you can see here. And it does have one major advantage. If we have a look at the uh, RawJS uh, application that we've got running at the moment and just open up our dev tools, I'm just going to reload the uh, app and go to our network tab. So you can see the amount of data transferred is quite minimal. Uh, probably some of that is the uh, styling and uh, setup as well. Um, but if we go back to the React app, uh, let me go to the index page here and just remove all of the raw stuff again. So I'm just going to remove those libraries that we've been importing uh, just to make it fair and then just reinstate the React app. Just refresh the page. You can see now that in the network tab, the amount of data that's been transferred is quite significantly more. Uh, it's nearly 10 times more. And that is obviously because we're loading in the React framework, although that's quite lightweight as well. It's taking up a lot more bandwidth. So RawJS has got the advantage there because we can achieve the same thing with it. But obviously, we don't need to pull in all of that React code uh, in order to get the same result. So I think RawJS does have a bit of a place in a developer's tool sets, especially if you're working on something that's got to be really lightweight and really minimal and where every bit of bandwidth counts, but you don't want to get involved in dealing with all of the DOM methods uh, and want a simple and quick way of setting up things like your event listeners and communication uh, between components. So what do you think? Will you be using RawJS on your next project? Let me know in the comments below. And if you're interested to see how the latest YouTube video React app was put together, then you should check out this next video where we go through how that was created from scratch.